So we've been talking about Samsung Notes over the last few videos, especially since the introduction of the new Samsung lineup. And today, guys, we are going to show you how to use Samsung Notes from the top down. How do you take notes? How do you create notes? How do you mark up PDFs? How do you lasso? How do you write with that S Pen? We're going to do it all today, so stay with me. First and foremost, thank you for staying with me. I'm Brandon Bonderfer, creator and founder of the Key to Success Planning System, a planning system designed to help professionals like yourself maximize your ideas and action steps and get the vision that you have for your career, your organization, your team into a blueprint that's going to work for you each and every day. Today, we're going to talk about Samsung Notes. It's been something that I've kind of glossed over the last few years. But now, as I look at the new Samsung lineup, see some of the integrations between the tab and the phone and how this product works, I think it's something that's going to be really key for those individuals that use a Samsung ecosystem. And I say that because Samsung Notes really only syncs across those devices. But if you're using the Samsung ecosystem, it is awesome. There's so much you can do. And we're going to dive into that today. As we talk about Samsung Notes, we're going to show you what it looks like on S22, the Z Fold 3, and the new Tab S8 Ultra. Now, for the most part of this video, we're going to use the Ultra to really show you what this works. But all these tools work on each of these products. Location of some of the actions are in different spots. But the idea is these are the things that make Samsung Notes really powerful. We're going to start by opening Samsung Notes, an orange logo with a nice white binder-like icon. And we click that, we come to this screen right here. This is basically your library of content. And you can see we have a planner, the key to success planner already there. But before we dive into that, let's talk about some of the things you do that you can create a note. So we can go ahead and create our note by tapping a little new add button. And this gives us our canvas. And from here, we can go ahead, we can basically start creating those lovely notes. We can do a little writing. And it'll give us some text there to work with. So that is a quick way to create a quick note. Now there's tons of different ways you can create notes uh, throughout the operating system of each of the devices. So we're not going to dive into that, but you do have some quick launch features available in many of the devices. To go ahead and add a PDF file, you would go right up here, click on PDF, and then you could use internal storage, OneDrive, or Google Drive to locate your PDF file and then import that PDF file to your device. Over on the left side here, we show our notebooks, who we're sharing our notebooks with, and then our availability to trash. And then we also have the availability to make folders. So if you wanna make a folder for work, for personal, maybe you have a journal you wanna make, this is where you can make those folders and collect all those notes in each one of the respective bins. So one thing that makes Samsung Notes really powerful is its ability to be a PDF annotation app and to be able to use PDFs that are interactive that have hyperlinks. This makes digital planning really powerful, especially on this device. So we can go ahead and we can open up our planner. And we can see from here that right now we have these tabs on the right side. What makes this planner and this product so unique is with Samsung Notes, we can create hyperlinks. So you can see we can use those tabs that are hyperlinked to jump to each one of the pages for the month out of view. We can also go ahead and we can click on an individual date and that'll get us to a daily spread. And these individual dates are individually hyperlinked as well so we can get to a daily spread throughout the month. And at any time we hit the key button, it brings us back to the home page. In this case here, we have notes that we can index that have our individual topics written in. And we can go ahead and click on one of these numbers and that'll take us to a page that's hyperlinked to that particular page. Really making the note taking experience a lot of fun when you're working within a notebook like this. You have the availability to label all projects, meetings, notes, goals, as well as being able to use some of the function templates like the professional builder, notes page, the vision board, annual keys, and quarterly keys in our program before you jump into the ideal week in your monthly spread. 
One question that comes up a lot of times is how do you add pages or copy pages throughout this PDF planner? In a lot of different PDF annotations, this is not an easy task. And if you're using something like the Remarkable, it's almost like impossible to do. But with Samsung Notes, it's pretty easy and convenient. So we can go ahead and we can jump on one of these note pages right here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna jump to a meeting page because I think meeting pages are pretty awesome, especially when you're planning out your week. So we're gonna go to a blank meeting page right here. We're gonna go up to this corner where we see our little icon here, page sorter, and we are on this page. So we're gonna go ahead and click in these three dots and we're gonna hit copy. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump to our month. We're gonna 24th. And we're gonna go right here on the 24th and we're gonna go ahead and click on those three dots again and we're gonna hit paste. And you can see what happens is that page was added right there. So we'll go back to the daily page. We're gonna close this page navigator. If I disable my pen tool and slide to the right, now I'm at that particular meeting page. That is one way you can easily copy and paste pages throughout the planning system itself. Another thing that's really cool is a lot of times when I'm on a particular page, let's just say, for example, I want to look at my week at a view page, which is this page right here. This is the page that I use to basically plan out my week. It helps me organize my thoughts and ideas, understand what my accomplishments are and what things matter most. Well, I want this page to be front and center each and every week and be easily accessible to me. I can go ahead and click on this little bookmark. What this allows me to do is I can close this, go somewhere else in the planner, say we're in this month here, I can quickly open this and click on the little bookmark tab and it shows me now pages that are bookmarked. And I can click on that one there that I just indicated and go right back to that page that I bookmarked. Now I can easily go through, just take that checkbox off and removes it from this library. I look at this as a, like a way to navigate to pages that you're using quite frequently. So if you have like goals in mind, if you have a habit tracker that you're using, or if you have like an ongoing project, you wanna be able to navigate to it real quick without having to jump through the system, that's a really good way to do this. And you can do it across all your notes, even if you're doing daily journaling. When it comes to page setup, up here where we have the three dots, we have an option to do page settings. We click on page settings, it's going to give us the ability to change scroll direction. If we go to vertical and jump back here, you'll see that we can scroll this way. A lot of us, especially in landscape mode, like to be able to scroll side to side. So back to page templates, right there to horizontal, click here, and then we can go ahead and zoom in our page and from that point we can easily scroll left to right. A lot of times you wanna be able to use the entire space or real estate of your screen. On the Ultra, there's a lot of space, but sometimes when you look over to a device like the Fold, you wanna be able to get as much space as possible. So by clicking on those three dots, we can go ahead and click full screen, and that's gonna give us the entire real estate minus the little toolbar that we're gonna talk about here in a minute. We can easily go back, hit the exit box, and that gives us the original screen that we were working with. But full screen mode is something that I use nearly every single day. Additionally, in page settings, we have this finger draw on. Now, if you're someone that wants to use your finger to draw, you can do that. However, for me, it's quite annoying. So I always wanna make sure that I turn this feature off by going into settings and finger draw off. Jumping into a note page here, one thing I wanna talk a lot about because it's something that comes up quite often in discussion is what happens if I'm typing? Now with this device here, it is meant to be used as a laptop-like device. So a lot of times we'll be using the keyboard and we're gonna to want to type. Well, if we wanna go ahead and create a text box, we can go ahead and enable our functions and we can go ahead and enable the keyboard and then we can just tap and hold and hit add text box. And that'll create a text box. Another way to do that is you can go up here where it says attachments and you can add a text box here. And that'll give you the text box where then you can resize it, you can move it from one spot to another, and then from there you can easily start to type in the system itself. Along with adding a text box, some other common features is being able to add an image, open up your camera and take a picture, scan a document or an application. This one's particularly powerful if you're scanning a document and you need to sign it or do some markup to send back to a colleague. Or again, adding a PDF, voice recording, an audio recording, or even to draw. The draw feature is a neat one for me because you can go ahead and you can start to draw this image. And then when you're done, it'll paste that image as a clipboard for you to be able to use. And there you can be able to cop, crop, cut, 
paste, delete, or even going back into the drawing if you choose to. So let's get into some of the functions that make note taking so powerful. So we're gonna start by enabling our pen tool and disabling read mode. From here, you can see across the top, we talked about the keyboard a little bit. We have here the ability to enter pen mode, highlight mode, eraser mode, and selection mode, commonly referred to as a lasso. So a little bit to go into this. When I click on the pen mode here, we're gonna start by clicking and holding, and we're gonna see our pen layout. Now we have a couple different pens that you choose from, and I can choose one. I'm gonna click this particular one here, which you can see there's a yellow star right here. The yellow star indicates that I've indicated this as a favorite tool. At any time, if I click on the little pen with the star button, I can see my favorite tool. So you can see I have a pen, I have a highlighter that's straight, and then I also have uh, a flowing highlighter that I can use to mark up, and I have various colors in that arrangement. Now I can go ahead and click on this little button here where it says shrink favorite tools, and that'll put it on the left side here. This is really helpful when you're wanting to jump between items. So let's just say I wanna write a note, and now I wanna quickly highlight that note, and then go back to writing and change color. Having that toolbar on the side really allows me to be able to jump into that a little bit more. Now at any given time, if I wanna reach my favorites, I can do so. And I also have the ability when I'm in my pen mode, I can also change those individual pen settings. So I can change the color, I can change the thickness. I can quickly access my favorite button, and that'll bring me back to this page here. And at any time I want to add or delete a favorite, I can. And anytime I want to go back to the screen and get rid of that toolbar, it'll disappear. A couple other things about the pen tool is you have the ability to change the thickness, you have the ability to use pressure point or non-pressure point, and you can go ahead and change the color and then I'll exit from there. Highlighting tool is very much the same. Again, you have the ability to choose your highlighting tool. And it's interesting to note that this one here has a little wave. What this allows me to do is I can write a highlight like that. If I choose this particular tool where you have the straight line, you can see what it'll do is it'll make that straight. So if you're marking up text or marking up a line, that tool is really a big feature. So sometimes what I'll do is I will have both of these tools of the same color in my favorites. Here I can adjust the thickness and the other thing that I can do is adjust the opacity. So I'll give you an idea here, if I jump it up to 79, it's pretty dark. But if I go in there and drop it down to say 20, it's pretty light. This allows me when I'm writing to be able to select a color or an opacity that allows my writing to show through. Now I can go ahead and if I wanted to, I could select that highlight and change style and I could also then adjust that notation. And you see there, I was able to change the individual color of that line. Jumping over into the eraser tool, pretty self-explanatory. I have the ability to do a stroke eraser or an area. When I click on area, it gives me a thickness. You can see the size of the radius of that circle increases. So we'll go to a three here. And as you see, as I go through here, it goes ahead and erases. If I choose to do a stroke, I come across, and as soon as I touch, that particular line or that stroke, it deletes everything. So where is this really nice, the area tool? Well, say for example, if I come back and do undo here and I have the aerial and I have the area tool selected, maybe what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I just wanna clean up that line, try to straighten it out a little bit, I can do that. At the same time, I wanna get rid of the highlighting tool that's around here and around here. 
But if I want to get rid of that highlighting tool that's underneath the word fishing, I can come here and just touch the edge of it and I can remove the highlighting tool as such. As far as selecting or using the lasso tool, I can select a word, I can make it larger, I can make it smaller, and I can change the style. So if we want to make that blue, we can do so. Now it's a little big, so we can come in here and change the style again, and let's bring it down to like a 10, so we can see it. Now what happens if we have some handwritten notes, we want to change the text. We can select it, and we can hit convert to text. And you can see right here it says, write a note with an exclamation point. I can hit convert, and now it converted that. Ideally, there's a better way to do this so that you can utilize a text box so that you have the ability to change it. But you can see it is in a text box here, and we can resize that. But there's another way that I want to show you that's really impressive. So one feature I really want to show you is how do you use the S Pen to write a handwritten note and create text as you're writing. So we already created that container. I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar once and then choose S Pen to text. And then I'm going to go ahead and start writing. And you can see as I write, it goes ahead and converts it to text. It gives me some functions where I can create spaces, I can delete, and maybe there's a word I'm just having a hard time writing out, I can go ahead and click on the keyboard and it'll give me an on-screen keyboard that I can quickly write out or type out in a word to replace that. And then I can jump back in and continue to write. So the next thing I want to show you is how do you convert an entire page of notes to text. So we've been taking some notes here in the planning system about our marketing plans. You can see 2022 marketing plans, January, we're gonna have a fish promotion. We're gonna do an ice shack giveaway in January and then brewer tickets in February. March is a four seasons trivia contest in Wisconsin here. Literally, you can start at seven o'clock in the morning. It can be negative 10 degrees. By 11 o'clock, it's snowing. By one o'clock, it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit and all the snow is melting only to experience freezing rain by five o'clock in the afternoon as the sun sets. So that's a big promotion. We have a lot of good questions and surveys and different trivia questions out there. So it's a big promotion for us. And April is the Fool's Gold Wisconsin Cheese Curd style. So we hand out gold and everybody thinks they're getting a gold, but really just cheese curds, but they're absolutely famous and flavorful. But if we have this marketing plan we're developed, we've taken some handwritten notes, we want to be able to convert this to text. I can go ahead up here in the toolbar and there's this icon that says convert to text. I can click on that. It's going to process the entire page. And upon doing so, you're going to see my notes. Now I can copy these notes and I can put those in another application or I can choose convert. And now you can see that my notes have been converted to text. For the most part, it does a really good job. You can see a couple of my twos turned into Z's, but for the most part, it did a really good job. I even recognized some of my bullet points that were in there. I find if I'm going to be doing some of this convert the text, I've learned to use different symbols and different ways that are easier to recognize. Uh, but overall, it's really awesome, powerful. I hit the undo button and it'll bring it right back to handwritten notes for me. Other things I can do in here is I can choose to create shapes. So if you want to draw a circle, you can do so and it'll quick make a circle perfect for you. Maybe you want to do a square inside that circle and we want it to be a pen and it'll convert that square as well. And I can use that lasso tool to select that and resize it, maybe move it out. I can change the style if I want it to be maybe a red and I want to make it bigger, hit done. I got a bigger square. Maybe I want the square bigger than the circle and make it look like that. And then I want to go ahead and start writing notes in here. I can do so. Another feature I want to show you is this lock page. By having this lock page on, the screen allows me to basically do whatever I want with the page. If I hit lock page, it doesn't allow me to move unless I use two fingers. So if you're someone that's struggling with um, your palm or you know just making extra brushes of your finger across the screen, that lock feature is really nice. So we showed you this before um, in a couple other videos, but I want to show it to you again today. If I open up my Samsung S22 and hit this little button right here, 
it'll activate a companion mode that allows me to get a full screen experience on here, but have all my tools over here. So I have my favorites that you saw before. I can go ahead and write a note And then I can go ahead and highlight that note. Go back to writing. And go back to a highlight here. So having this companion feature is really nice, especially if you're in a pretty fast setting where you're maybe taking notes in class or you're working at your desk and you want to be able to make lots of notations on, on the go. This is a really good feature. You can go ahead and disconnect that anytime. It'll disconnect from your phone and it'll go ahead and reconnect you to the toolbar and screen layout that you had previous. So one other thing I haven't really showed you that I wanted to show you was how to actually pull an image into here. So we're going to pull up my images, go to gallery. I have an image of a picture I took yesterday. I'm going to pull that image in here and let's just say I'm going to pull that image right here. Now I have the ability to do different things with that photo. And what I want to do is I want to make some notations. And be able then to send this to a co colleague. So that's the last thing I want to show you in today's tutorial is how do you go about sharing? So we can go ahead and open up our settings and click share. And here we have the ability to share a PDF file, an image file, a text file. So I'm going to share a PDF file. And what that's going to do is that allows me to take this particular page and send it off as a PDF and notation uh, with all my edits. So if I want to collaborate with other people, I can do so. We spent much of this tutorial looking at what Samsung Note looks like on the Ultra tablet that just came out. But here's a quick look at what it looks like in full screen mode on the Z Fold 3. You can see I have the ability, like I showed before, to go into full screen mode. I can easily zoom in and zoom out. So if I want to go ahead and go into reading mode, go into February and go to February 24th, which was the day we were taking notes on. And I want to go ahead and I want to zoom in and I'm going to turn reading mode off and turn on pen. Choose one of my favorite pens I have here and go here and write lunch with Tom. I can do that. And now I can go and highlight and I can highlight that note. So all the same functions that we were able to do on the Ultra, we're able to do on the Fold. As you can see here, all the tools are there and we have the same availability to do the ink to text, which to me I think is really powerful, especially on the Fold device and on a phone. So looking at the S22 to give you a comparison, we'll go ahead, we'll zoom in, go into February, go to the 24th, and you can see we have those same notes that we had before. We're going to pop out our S Pen. And now I'm going to zoom in, turn reading mode off. And I'm going to mark up the things that I was able to complete today. So going to writing here, I was able to return my S21. Uh, I did send cheese curds to my mother. And I'm going to change the color font on there to black. And I also picked up milk from Quick Trip. So those things are all done. So using this as a to-do list or a checklist is awesome and very convenient, especially when you're on a go with these mobile devices. So there you guys have it. That is how to dive in and use Samsung Notes on the Samsung lineup if you're using an S-Tab, a Fold, or one of the new Galaxy phones that are out there with the S Pen, even a Note for that matter if you still have one. This application has really come a long way and it's gonna allow you to take notes on the go. It's gonna allow you to get back to your desk and expand on those ideas and thoughts. So if you're in that meeting over lunch and you get back to your desk and you're like, oh, I really wanna digest that a little more, you can do that across these devices. It's a powerful application. It makes digital planning amazing. You saw all the things we were able to do. Guys, if you wanna learn more about our planning system, hit the description up. We have tons of videos if you wanna learn how these applications work on these individual devices. We have videos on that. If you learned one thing today, do me a favor, hit the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you got questions, go ahead, hit the comments. Myself or someone in the community will get back to you. And by all means, if you wanna learn more about technology, digital planning, note taking, and experience what it means to live in the Midwest, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. 
if you haven't already, and we will join you guys in the next video. I'm Brandon Bonifer, creator and founder of the Key to Success Planning System, and God willing, we'll see each of you in the next video. God bless you.